Thank you again. Good morning, all the participants. Uh, I will say again, my name is Emmanuel Gemene Duncio, and uh, today we are going to discuss about the transport sector. As you may realize, we have started with uh, the uh, general methodology, showing all what uh, is going into this model, which are the equations behind and everything. And uh, we have now, so from yesterday, today and tomorrow, we will be jumping into each sector, trying to explain again some specificity of this sector and how it is handled in my head to evaluate the energy demand. So uh, yesterday we had the presentation on uh, industry. And as you noticed yesterday, it was uh, a couple of, uh, let's say it include agriculture, construction, mining and manufacturing. And those sectors are the sectors which are producing physical goods, physical goods for our needs. Let's say you will, realize, you will realize that there is a need of energy to produce all these physical needs because there are things that the human being needs. We, are, we have also another sector, this transport sector is not going to produce physical goods, but it is also a need for human being. Unfortunately, we are a species. We are a species of uh, living things on this earth. We don't have the, the chance that all our needs are located at the same place. For example, for the tree, if you are a tree, then you have all your food is there. All what you need, all the air you need is there. If you don't have that air or if you don't have your food inside the soil, then you will just die. So. We can also see our ability to move from one place to another to find our need like an opportunity. Because let's imagine if we stay only on one place and at that place, we don't have anything to survive, then we will just die. But we have the opportunity to migrate from there to go and find something that will fit ourselves better. So that is uh, the purpose of the transport sector and it is a big need of human being. And um, that's also why you will realize, if you take your energy balance, you will realize that transport sector is accounting for a big share. So it is one of the most consumer of energy in a country, or even in a town, or even in a, a village. So uh, that's why here we will analyze very uh, deeply. Let's say the methodology will still be the same. Uh, that we have been applying elsewhere, but we realize that here there are some other particular things. For example, for the sector that we were talking about yesterday, because the activity there can be measured by the production, the GDP or the value added, which is linked to the output of those sectors, was used like the driving parameter. Here we will adjust again, we will select something much more specific, much more close to what is, uh, can be used to capture the activity in this uh, sector. So <clears throat> that is um, uh, why this sector will be analyzed separately and uh, we will in this presentation show some uh, uh, particularity of this sector. And um, we've... Uh, the, the, we will uh, first talk about the mathematical formulation, and after that, we will see how the structure of this sector is defined, how we can define transport mode and fuels in this uh, uh, model, and finally, we will analyze how we can prepare the input data to, uh, to, set, to, to, to fill the boxes needed by the model. And for the math mathematical formulation, as I already said, you know this formula, and it is the same formula that we are going to apply in this model. And in this sector, it will be even more simpler than the other one, because the energy here will be evaluated directly as final energy. Therefore, we will not need to apply the second generic formula of uh, Maya to evaluate the energy demand in this sector. So let's first, when we are going to, when we want to uh, 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 design the equations which are behind this transfer sector, 
let's first uh, look at some key consideration. So as I said here, we will select another driving parameter, which is more close to the activity in transport sector. Here, the driving parameter, there are two. We have passenger kilometer and we have ton kilometer. Passenger kilometer will be for passenger transportation. That means transportation of people, the movement from people from one place to another one. For example, you can go from your home to the work, to, you can go from your home to market, you can go from a market, let's say, to a factory. That is uh, passenger transportation. Again, we have also the movement of goods. That means here we are moving things. Let's say all the sector that we have described are producing certain things, but they are not staying at the factory. We need to move them from there to our house to satisfy our need there. And here then, we need these two driving parameters to better capture the activity there. The passenger kilometer is just the multiplication of the distance traveled by the number of people that has performed this distance. So it is for the country or for a town, depending on how you set up your model, it is the total distance uh, uh, performed by everybody inside that uh, area. And the ton kilometer is just similar to the passenger kilometer. There it is the weight. That means the weight that you carry multiplied by the distance that you travel. So those are the two driving parameters that we will uh, use. And again, we need after this to specify the transport mode. So this activity, we will try to understand which are the transportation modes which are used to perform this activity. And we will split it according to all these modes. And after that, we need to understand also what is the intensity and the load factor which are defined for each transportation mode. For example, a taxi will not carry the number of people that a bus is carrying. A train will not carry the number of people that a bus is carrying. So we need to take that into account to be able to evaluate the contribution of each transportation mode inside the uh, transport activity. And finally, there is also in this model a flexibility that is given to the user to give uh, to have more uh, accuracy in the evaluation of energy demand. That the model gives us the framework to model the passenger transportation in urban and in uh, intensity. Urban here is uh, what we are calling the big cities that we have in one town, where we have uh, many cars, we have many transportation modes, and therefore we cannot compare the consumption of uh, energy by cars there like the one that is being done on highway, for example. So because of that, the model gives us a framework to split the passenger transportation mode into two parts. One is what is called urban, and the other one is called intensity. So now, this was uh, a kind of description, uh, let's say a qualitative description of how the transport sector is set up. Let's see how we can now uh, model it with equations. So as I said first, we have to consider in this one, in this sector, uh, some uh, uh, subsector if we call it call them like that the passenger transportation which is split into two subsectors urban and intensity as i said and then the freight transportation which is for uh, goods transportation of uh, goods from one place to another and finally there is another part that is international international transportation and that international transportation is there why because in our country, in our energy balance, we need to provide a quantity of energy for, let's say, uh, uh, ships or for planes which are coming to our airport, uh, refueling there, but the transportation is not performed in our country. So that is what is called here international transportation. 
because in your energy balance, you will capture that fuel. You need to provide it even. Because if I, uh, I am a, a, a pilot, and I know that if I come to your country, I will not have enough fuel to refuel to come back, then I will not come. So to make your airport being uh, be functional, then you need to provide that fuel. That's why this fuel is also estimate, estimated in this model. And when we want to model, uh, let's say, uh, transport sector, that means if we have allocated some fuel in this transport sector, we need to define at least one transportation mode. And what we, we should understand, because uh, that the fuel that we have allocated for transport has to be consumed by something. So we have to define at least one transportation mode for each of the category that we would like to model in the, uh, uh, the uh, in our analysis. And for each transportation mode, we have to link it to one fuel. So we have to associate it to one fuel. Let's say, for example, a car that is consuming diesel, it will only consume diesel. A car that is consuming electricity will consume electricity. Of course, in the reality, you will have certain some cars like uh, hybrid cars, which can consume either electricity or gasoline or electricity or diesel. But here you will have to use a trick to model it in this uh, model. I, either you would specify a, a, a particular type of fuel that is called hybrid, and uh, you, you know the ratio uh, inside this type of fuel that is, let's say, maybe 20% uh, uh, electricity and 80% um, uh, diesel, or let's say a specific ratio that you have. So that is just a trick to model it, but uh, the, the, the constraint of the model is that each transport station mode is associated to one fuel. Okay, and the international transportation is calculated as a function of total GDP. So we will understand why. Okay, now let's start with uh, the equation in the freight transportation. For freight transportation, the activity is multiplied by the specific energy consumption per driving parameter. Because the activity here is what we are calling the driving parameter in terms of ton kilometer. So the total number of ton kilometers that you have in the country, you will now multiply it by the, the specific energy consumption per driving parameter, which is energy per ton kilometer energy unit per ton kilometer. You multiply it by ton kilometer, you will have energy. So and you will do it for each transportation mode. That's why here you have the uh, factor that is in the middle here. That is to split the total ton kilometer that we have in the country by transportation mode. So for each transportation mode, these two first parameter will give us the ton kilometer that were performed by this transportation mode. And we will just then multiply by the energy consumed for uh, one ton kilometer to obtain the total energy consumed by that transportation mode. So you realize that we have the same formula that we have uh, specified things. And again, how is this freight activity evaluated? are evaluated according to the activity in all sectors. Here, each sector is contributing to generate a certain quantity of good that needs to be carried. For example, when you have your agriculture activity, at the end you have the crops that are there. The crops will not stay in the farm. When you will carry the, you need to carry the crops from the farm to the market or from the farm to, to your house or from the farm to a factory. And the factory also, when the factory will produce something, let's say a juice, for example, the juice will not also stay there. The juice ha need to be carried from there to the market, from there to a ship, or if you want to send it abroad, and so on and so forth. So 
Each sector is contributing on his way with his own uh, coefficient to the generation of threat that need to be carried. So that's why the equation is like this. The total activity is, let's say, a constant value that we have there. That can also, the physical explanation of this constant value can be, let's say, a quantity of goods that you are carrying, which are not specifically linked to the value added. For example, it can be linked to population, it can be waste that you are generating. When you generate waste at your home, the waste has to be carried from there to the depository where you have to keep them. Or if you want to produce a kind of, uh, let's say, methane with it or so on, but you need to move it also. That is a, the part that is not clearly linked to the GDP. And each sector that is producing physical good, its contribution on the freight generation will be proportional to its activity. So that's how we can understand this parameter. Another simple way to understand it could also just to look at historical values. Let's say if you are monitoring the generation of freight in your country, then you can be able to calculate what is going on each year, and therefore uh, you can uh, draw a curve, like the curve that we have on the right side here. You can draw that curve and finally generate these coefficients which are needed for your model. And inside uh, the, the other uh, activity that we need to evaluate is the passenger activity. And the passenger activity, as we said, uh, urban and uh, intensity. The urban phase, the urban the passenger activity is evaluated for the population living in large cities. Remember, when uh, Ilse presented the first day a table on uh, demography, there was one parameter there. The parameter was uh, specified population living in large city. So those are the people which are concerned by this uh, urban transportation. And what I, I have already said that it is split like that because of accuracy, the need of accuracy. Here in those type of places, the traffic is congested and um, the energy consumption per, per, per kilometer is uh, higher than on highway, for example. So that's why here we have to split there like that. And even the transportation mode, which are suitable for that area, may not be suitable for the remaining area of the country. So here, to evaluate this activity, which is passenger kilometer, we need to evaluate the distance that each person is uh, traveling per day. And that is much more simple for us to estimate. And then we can multiply it by 365 to have the total distance traveled by each person on average per, day, per year. And finally, we will multiply by the population living in that area. And when we multiply by the population living in that area, we can divide now by 1,000 because we want to have our passenger kilometer uh, in terms of billion. So that is just how we can, uh, uh, we, we can evaluate the activity of urban passenger. And for intensity, pass uh, uh, no, after that, after the, uh, the evaluating this uh, uh, activity of uh, urban passenger, we need again to split it by mode. Let's say among all these passenger kilometer, what is the fraction performed by cars? What is the fraction performed by buses? What is the fraction performed by motorbikes? And so on and so forth. So we need to evaluate all that and calculate uh, and, and make this split. Uh, what is important also to take into account here is the model gives you the possibility to define as many transportation modes as you want. But is it really necessary for you to go into all this detail? That's why before you start splitting your model, before you uh, set up the structure of your model, 
you should first understand what is the purpose of your analysis. What do you want to understand by carrying out this analysis? Is it necessary for you to go into this detail? Why can you not combine, for example, all the type of uh, cars that are similar? Let's say, for example, I may say that, okay, I will not make a differentiation between uh, uh, um, four, four times four cars than small taxis and so on and so forth. All those cars that are using gasoline, I may consider that, okay, all these are gasoline cars. All the cars that are using diesel, I can you say that those are diesel cars. I don't need to, probably to go into detail uh, to understand clearly what uh, this specific, this Japanese cars or this uh, German car or anti. No, probably I don't need it. Probably I need it. It depends on the purpose of my analysis. That's why we need to keep this into, uh, um, we need to take it into consideration. And at the end of the day, the value that we will type for each one will be an average value. An average value corresponding to all what falls under the group that I've considered. And we have the specific energy consumption per driving parameter, which is actually the energy consumption per passenger kilometer. But it is much more easy for us to evaluate the distance travel per a certain distance. Uh, let's say the, the, the energy consumed for, uh, per, per 100 kilometer, for example. When you will look at the statistics, even when you will be buying your car, they will give you the consumption, but in this so uh, in this unit, that, that means uh, it can be either in liter, in liter per 100 kilometer or energy per 100 kilometer. And from there, it, it, uh, we need to transform this uh, into the parameter that is uh, used, the, 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 the specific energy consumption per, per driving parameter by using this formula. That means we just divide the energy consumption per 100 kilometer by the load factor. Let's say, for example, if I am in a car, I have a car, we are three inside that car, and my car is uh, consuming, let's say, a certain amount of uh, energy, let's say 10 liters per 100 kilometer. Then the number of Yes, so what we have to keep in mind is that all these parameters that we are typing in the model are on average, uh, are average parameter because we are talking about a huge amount, a huge amount of uh, individuality. The way I'm driving my car, I will use it differently. The age of my car will also affect the quantity of energy that I consume for 100 kilometers. So we will take this into account to take uh, to to look at how the fleet the fleet in the country is new, so we we'll not not just take the value that we are looking on internet and then we see that okay a new car has this efficiency, then we try to use it and apply it here. No, we will try now to understand what is the real situation of our country and try to capture all this, meaning that behind each number that we will type here, you can even write a booklet. Okay, so after we have defined it like that, we just have to apply our famous formula to have the energy that is defined, that is uh, consumed for each transportation mode. And then how about the intensity? The inter for the intensity uh, passenger transportation, what is first, what we need first to understand here is that Intensity activity is performed by everybody in the country. The fact that I am living in a large city does not avoid me to go to the village. The fact that I'm living there, I may even have certain activity in another town. Then I will need to, to use the highway to move from the, let's say, capital city to that uh, secondary town of the country. So it is not just a matter of people living elsewhere in the country, but even the people living in light uh, you uh, will, will do 
the intensity uh, uh, transportation. That's why here you will realize that the total population is used to evaluate the overall activity. And here we have the total population that we will multiply by the distance traveled yearly. That is the difference between the other one. Remember, for urban passenger transportation, we evaluated the distance travel per day because it's much more easy for us to, 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 to fill that number. But for this one, it is also much more easy for us to fill the number in terms of yearly value. Because if I ask you uh, how, uh, what is the distance that you are traveling on intensity daily, uh, you may even say zero because it does not come directly in your mind that you are traveling sometime. But if I ask you that, okay, for the whole year, what is the distance that you perform on intensity? Then you can start saying that, okay, last month I was in the village and then I went to this place and you start now calculating the total number of kilometers that it makes. So it will be much more easy for you to evaluate it in terms of uh, yearly value. That's why for this formula, we will use the yearly value to evaluate the distance travel and then multiply by the population to half the number of passenger kilometers. The dividing by 1,000 here is to match with the unit of uh, the passenger kilometer that we, are, we have here, which is billion passenger kilometer. So that is uh, what we have for the activity to evaluate the methodology that is used by the model to evaluate the intensity passenger activity. And then we have again to split this. In this intensity passenger transportation, we split this into two parts. One part that is performed by private cars, that means all those people having private cars, the activity that they are doing on intensity, we will capture that part separately. And the remaining, those people who does not own the, a car, if they want to perform their activity, they will use a public transportation mode. And that is how it is split. That means the public transportation mode will be the difference between the total activity and the private activity. And for the private activity again, how can we evaluate that part? That part, we will take into account the number of people who have the car, what we are calling here the car ownership. It is a parameter we, uh, which describes the number of people, uh, of people who own one car. That means the population uh, divided by the, uh, the, the car ownership will give us the number of cars that we have there. Because this car ownership here is the number of people owning one car. Let's say if we have, for example, three persons for one car, then to have the number of cars of in the country, we will just need to divide the total population by the by, by three, and then we will have the number of cars that we have in the country. So that is uh, how we have here, the number of cars that we have in the country, and then the distance, the distance performed by each car yearly. So multiplying this by the number of uh, people, uh, the, the number of cars by the distance traveled, we will have the total distance traveled by all the cars in the country. Now we need also to multiply it by the load factor. That means when the car is moving, how many person is carrying? Then we multiply it by it. We will have then the total number of passenger kilometer performed by private cars. So that's how we evaluate this uh, private activity. And then we will just make the total activity minus this one to have the one of the public transportation. So when we have this uh, activity, which is split like that, we will have here to specify in each category, the transportation mode, which are uh, performing this activity. For private car, for example, all the type of cars that we have, we will have to allocate, let's say to split the, the, activity, the activity according to that. And for public transportation, we will do the same. And 
After that, we then have the passenger kilometer performed by each transportation mode. The only thing that remains is to multiply it by the energy consumption per driving parameter to have the final energy demand by mode. And that is what is done by this equation. So we just have to multiply now the passenger kilometer for each transportation mode with the energy intensity or the specific energy consumption per passenger kilometer. So now let's talk about the international transportation. For the trans international transportation, it is assumed that uh, this um, uh, is proportional to the total activity in the country. That means the total GDP in the country. That's why the equation is so simple like that. It's just a straight line that is like that. We have the first value, that is the intercept, it's a constant. And we have also another constant that uh, will be multiplied by the, uh, the, the, the total GDP to have the energy that we need to provide for international transportation. That means the energy that uh, is being consumed, but is not being used to reduce our own passenger kilometer or our own ton kilometers. And uh, why are we considering it like that? We will realize that, of course, this is not the energy consumed uh, uh, um, for international transportation, but it can give us an idea. This is, uh, let's say, this course shows us that the more we have, we have the activity in our country, because we have on X axis here the GDP, and on Y axis we have the number of passengers carried for each country. And you can realize that more we have the GDP, more we have the passenger that uh, which are carried. So this is just a confirmation of what was is done in the in, in the model. Just to say that okay, really it is proportional to this parameter. Of course, in some cases you can have certain reasons which will uh, uh, bring you to a different situation. So now, after we have defined all this equation, after we have designed, explained how the model is calculating the energy demand according to each sector of this transport transportation mode, then let, let now see how we have to structure the model, how we have to define the fuel type inside our model. In the model, in the part that is called the general information, that is where you are setting up your model, you will have a, 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 a sheet that is called transport. And in this transport sheet, when you click there, you will have something similar to this. Of course, when it comes, it will not come with so many lines because you are the one going to specify, to customize it so that it will represent your reality. And how do we understand this? When you click on the plus, the, the, the green plus, then you can create a new line. Create a new line, there you will define the transportation mode by giving a name. Let's say you will give a name here, for example, you can say a train. A train, and you will select the fuel that a train is consuming. When you select the fuel, you are also saying that this transportation mode will be active in this sector. Because here you can realize we have freight, we have passenger intensity, and then we have passenger urban. So by selecting a fuel under each column here, you are automatically allocating that transportation mode into that sector, and you are also allocating to this transportation mode a specific fuel. So that is what you have to do everywhere here. And then we have also some other parameters here. Here is public, public passenger activity. Here you will, when you, you tick this, it means that this transportation mode that you have defined here is a public transportation mode. And what is important to understand is that it's, it, just, it is just applied to the intensity transportation mode. That means it is there that you will have it like the uh, intensity, uh, like the public transportation mode, because it is there that we have this split. And uh, again, we have another column here. It's a car. 
we have a column of, if you check, for example, this box, you are saying that the transportation mode that you have defined there is a car, meaning that you are not even obliged to type car somewhere. You are just, you can even have your own name, the way that you call it in your country. But to tell to the model that this is a car, then you have to tick this box so that the model will understand that this is a car, and the meaning that this is a private car. So it will be model like a private car. And again, we have another column here, airplane. For airplane, if you tick the part, then it means that the transportation mode that you have defined is an airplane. And the airplane has also another specificity that we will see when we will be analyzing the input data preparation. And after that, where are those fuel coming? You are still the one going to define the fuels that, that will be considered in the model. And these fuels, they are defined by clicking on the fuel definition, this button that we have on the uh, high uh, uh, right corner here. So when you click there, you will have another sheet appearing like the one that we have here. And by clicking on the red plus here, you will at all the time add one fuel and give the category. You have the, the, the almost three category, electricity, motor fuel, and you have also steam, uh, steam. So here you will define the fuels that are used by your transportation mode there. Don't forget all the time to save. It has already been highlighted since the beginning of this training. Okay, and now, how can we prepare the input data? The input data are coming from the statistics, surely, or sometimes you may even also uh, estimate, make some estimate and understand how is the situation in uh, your country. Because unfortunately, the transport sector is one of the sector in which we generally does not have a lot of uh, uh, statistic in many countries, especially in developing countries. So in some situation, you will have to estimate to estimate what could have been the value. Of course, it will be good at the end to have a good range. Let's say not uh, estimate something that is uh, unrealistic, but at the end to have some value that are, let's say, acceptable, but that are plausible. So in this model, only the fuel demand uh, directly related to freight and passenger transportation is model. That is something that we clearly need to understand. Because let's say, for example, if you have a, 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 a transportation company, that transportation company may have some offices. But if you just go there and ask them their energy balance, how they are consuming energy, they may give you even the one that is going into their generator, the diesel that they are using in their generator, they will give you also the electricity that they are consuming for their computers and so on and so forth. And if you don't take care, you may imagine that probably they even have electric car, or you may, conf you may make a confusion and put that electricity as electricity that is going to be consumed by cars. So you have to be careful and prepare your energy balance accordingly. So you have to make some a split, a proper design of this, uh, 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 of this field. Another thing is that, of course, transportation sector here is a service because it is not providing physical good. It's providing you a service. It's moving you from one place to another one. So normally it is accounted inside service sector. But for this model, for a matter of accuracy, we split it differently to analyze, to, to, to capture, the, 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 to have, um, let's say, a better estimation of uh, the energy that may be needed for that uh, uh, sector. But the remaining parameters, like, uh, for example, the GDP, the GDP will be accounted in service sector. And the other uh, electricity, for example, that is used for computers and other fuel that is used probably for some other purposes in the transportation company, 
That one will not be accounted in the transport sector, but in service sector. So, yes, just like that. So the first thing that you will need to adjust properly is your energy balance. Make sure that the energy balance is capturing exactly what you want to model, because here we are modeling only the energy that is being consumed by transportation modes. So we have to remove from all our energy balance, all the columns of our energy balance, what we estimate not being used by this transportation mode. So that is the first uh, activity that we have to carry out. That means to adjust our energy balance so that it reflects clearly what we want to model. And after we have adjusted our energy balance, we need again to make some split. We need to split it according to freight activity, according to passenger activity, and even according to international activity. So we have to split it. For example, if we have this surface uh, table here, then this diesel that is used in the uh, uh, transport, transport sector, we need to split according to what is used on in domestic for domestic activity and what is used for international activity. And gasoline, the same, uh, jet fuel, the same, and so on and so forth. So that is um, the first step to split it according to international and domestic. And after the domestic activity, we have again to split it according to threat activity, according to uh, urban activity and according to intensity activity. So when we split it like that, we will have an energy balance that is written like the, uh, as the last table that we have there. And from, from there, we need now to start analyzing sector by sector what, how we will calculate this input parameter. So the, the main input parameter that are needed for freight activity are the activity per sector, that means the ton kilometer, how they are generated in the whole country, and uh, the share of total activity by transportation mode, the energy intensity by transportation mode. So those are the parameters that are needed by the model. So we need to evaluate it to see how we will go from our statistic to this parameter. Of course, in the model, we have this the, the ton kilometer which is generated according to this formula, meaning that we also have another input parameter, which is like this, uh, this uh, intercept value. We have another input parameter, which is the, uh, uh, <clears throat> the slope of the, the curve in each sector. That means the contribution, the, fa the, the, the factor related to the contribution of that sector into threat generation. So those are the input parameters that we need to evaluate. And in the model, this is where this parameter will fit. That means this coefficient, the structure that you have defined for your economy, we will have to provide each parameter for, like, uh, for it like that. But unfortunately, generally, it is not always available. Let's say you don't always have the possibility or even the information to calculate this ton kilometer, sector by sector, subsector by subsector. That's why uh, <clears throat> in many situations we will realize that every uh, all the ton kilometer will be put in the base value. So we'll just evaluate roughly for the whole country and put it inside that area. It may also be, let's say, that we don't need to understand what is going on inside this sector but we just need to capture the overall freight activity. And then when we have this freight activity that is uh, defined like that, we need to split it. The part that is international will be captured by international transportation, so we have to remove it from the total. And the remaining now, we have to split it according to the transportation mode, which are used to carry this good from one place to another one. And from there, we can now calculate the modal split. That means the fraction of each part of each transportation mode inside the total. That means it is, for example, here, this 
value. That means 1,786 divided by the total value, which is uh, here 5,000 and this, and so, so 5,720. And then we have this 31%. And the same thing for the drop, we will have this value and so on and so forth. So that is how we will um, split this activity to have this passenger kilometer. And um, again, inside the model here, the base value that we are saying, we will type it everything here in case we don't have the split, the breakdown according to each sector of the economy. We will type all the value in this place. And then we will now try to capture in our own analysis, in our own uh, uh, um, estimation, how it will evaluate in the future according to how we understand it in the case, in, in our case. Another simple way of evaluating it in case you don't have at least anything according to that, you will have to estimate. And to estimate this number of 10 kilometers, you may take all the transportation modes that which are using you are uh, uh, which are used to, to perform freight activity, you multiply the mileage, the annual mileage of this by the load factor. That means the weight carry, you multiply by that. And then you multiply by the number of this type of car in your country. Because generally you may have the statistic on your fleet in the, in the country. And from there you can now multiply it like that and have the total threat activity in the country. And there you can put it in the base value, as we said, in case you don't have the possibility to evaluate it sector by sector. And after that, this is where you will type the modal split. And if you follow that methodology, you can also evaluate the activity done by each transportation mode. You divide by the total and you multiply by 100. That is how you will get the value that you will type here, like uh, the modal split. And for the intensity, if you have the data in terms of liter, liter per 100 kilometer, you just need here to divide by the load factor of that truck, for example. And then you will, sorry, then you will have the, you will have the uh, uh, liter per 100 ton kilometer. And later on, you can just apply the heat content on it to have the kilowatt hour per 100 kilometer. Of course, in some cases, you may have the value that is already defined in terms of 10 kilometer. You will just need to convert it by using the heat content of that fuel to have the energy per ton kilometer. And then when you have this information, this is where you will have to type it in the model. And uh, again, of course, you will realize that all these parameters that we are typing and not just for the base year, but we also need to provide the, the, the projection in the future. And the projection will depend on many parameters, will depend on the policy that you are defining. For example, if we are taking, let's say, the number of liters per 100 kilometers, this can be, you can have a certain policy in the country that is a policy related to energy efficiency. And then from where you are staying, you will now try to understand how this parameter is going to evaluate in the future. And you will try to convert that policy into the input parameter that, you, that the model is asking. So let's look, look now at uh, the urban transportation. And for the urban transportation, we have similar kind of parameter that we have to provide but we have to provide the average daily distance travel per person. We have to provide to the model the load factor per transport mode. And we have to provide also the share of total activity by transport mode. And uh, of course, the last parameter, uh, there, there is a mistake here, I will correct it. So that is the energy intensity per transport mode. That is uh, energy unit per 100 kilometer not 100 uh, or 100 passenger kilometer, not 100 kilometer, yes. So here we have to evaluate that distance, that average distance travel per person. And we have, uh, in case 
we, ha we have to keep in mind for the urban uh, activity that this is only the population living in large city. And uh, for, yes, and for uh, the, the, the load factors, we, we also need to take into account the fact that it is not the capacity of the car. Let's say I may have a car of uh, five persons, but in this five person, on average, my car is moving with two person only inside or with three person inside on average. So by typing this number, we should take into account the fact that there are some times that the car is moving at full capacity. There are even some times that only the driver is inside. So we have to take it, in, it into account to have an average value. And um, again, we can estimate in case we don't have certain information, we can also estimate this urban activity just by using the load factor, average load factor, using the annual mileage of these cars and the number of this each transportation mode. By multiplying all this, we will then have the activity, the, the urban activity of each transportation mode. And summarizing everything, we will have the total urban activity of this uh, uh, in, in the whole country. <clears throat> so when we have this activity by, by, by transportation mode, we can again calculate the fraction of each one, which will be the contribution if, of each of these transportation activity into the whole transportation activity. So that is what the model is calling the modal split. So, and finally, the, intensity, the, the, the intensities or the specific energy consumption is defined here in terms of energy unit per 100 kilometer. So we will just convert our liter per 100 kilometer into a kilowatt hour per 100 kilometer. And those are the input parameters that we will now type here in the model. Here we have the distance travel that we have to type and then for the, the load factors that we will type here and on the next sheet here we will type the uh, modal split of each transportation mode and finally the energy intensity of uh, the transportation mode. Now <clears throat> for this energy intensity we should also take into account the fact that it is different from the one that we may have typed in urban area. In urban area, for example, or in freight transportation, for example, the value may have different structure. Let's say may have a uh, different evolution over the time. Because when we are talking about the trucks, for example, when you buy a truck, a truck will stay in your fleet more years, let's say maybe 20 years before going out. But if you have a personal car, the personal car will stay maybe only five years. So all this will affect the, 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 the will affect the, the inertia that you have. If you want to put on a policy to change to, uh, to let's say to reduce the consumption of your cars, it will be less efficient when you are applying it on trucks because you will uh, you will not force someone to sell or to leave. Of course, you can impose that this truck has to be moved out of the fleet. But the measure will not be so friendly. The measure will be so difficult for people to apply because you will be realizing that my truck is still usable. But now your policy is saying that I should put it out. Then you will try to look another way of continuing using it. So the policy, the application of that policy will be much more difficult than the one that you are applying for small cars for example, maybe after five years, the guy already has to change the car according to the type of routes that he has. Then when he comes back to the market, he just realized that you impose to the people importing the car in the country not to import old cars. Then the efficiency will, be, will rapidly improve uh, in, in, those, uh, uh, in that situation. So... After we have typed those parameters for the base year, we need again to evaluate how we will estimate the future values and then to be able to capture a specific policy in our country. So now, 
for uh, intensity transportation passenger. Here we have the average distance travel per person that we have to provide. We have the car ownership that we have to provide. We have the average yearly distance travel per, 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 uh, per, per private mode that we have to provide. We have the load factor per transportation mode that we have to provide. We have the share of total uh, public activity transportation mode. We have the share of uh, uh, private transportation mode. We have finally the intensity for each transportation mode. So those are the input parameter which are needed to model properly the intensity activity. And here, for the average yearly distance travel, we can also evaluate, let's say, uh, it represents on average, it is on average. So we have to take it, let's say, uh, for example, people that are traveling a lot and people that are always staying at home, they have also to be a, a part of the analysis. So it is an average value that we have to take into account here. For the car ownership, okay, of course, fortunately, this parameter is generally available because the car are being registered and um, you can have uh, some statistic and if, uh, go from those statistics and evaluate the active car that you have and uh, the uh, uh, average yearly distance travel. Okay, of course, that one also, sometimes you may not have the information and you may have to estimate that value. Of course, if you would like to have it more accurately, probably you will have to put on a, a short survey a small survey to try to understand what is happening. There is also another mistake here. I will have to correct it. That is a ton kilo, a passenger kilometer, not ton kilometer. And um, here, we, you can also estimate, in case you don't have all this information, you can estimate the activity in terms of passenger kilometer by multiplying the number of a vehicle by the mileage, the annual mileage of each vehicle, and by the load factor of each vehicle, it will give you the overall intensity activity that we have in the country. And um, for the evolution of those parameters, what we can realize is that the passenger activity is closely linked to the uh, economic activity or the development. So the more the country will be developed, the more people will move. So that has to be captured when we are moving our value from today to the, into the future. And um, the load factor also, those are also some elements that we need to take into account when we are calculating it in uh, our projection. People will be moving from more, uh, uh, the, the actual situation to a situation where they have more comfort when they are moving. Again, there are some peculiarity that we need to take into account here. For cars in this sector, you will have only one place to type the load factor. That means the load factor should be an average load factor for all the private transportation mode. So all what you have defined as cars, you have to take it on average to type the value here. That's why we do not recommend you, for example, to account the motorbike like a private car. Because when you consider motorbike, let's say the load factor of motorbike is maybe one or one or two or 1.1. And the, the load factor of the car is uh, maybe three. So if you mix them together, you may lose accuracy. It's better to split the motorbike apart because his load factor is very different from the other one. And therefore you may model the motorbike in public transportation mode. Even though you know that the motorbike is a private transportation mode, you may model it as a public transportation mode just to simplify your life, just to make everything be simple uh, to, to, to operate. And again, we have here another particularity is that for a plane, the load factor is specified in terms of percentage of occupancy. That means, for example, you may have a, a, a plane, a plane with 100 people, 
let's say the full capacity is 100 people and you have 90 people inside on average, then the, 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 the occupation, the percentage of occupation will be 90 percent. So that is uh, something that we need to take into account. And again, the energy intensity for plane will be different. It will be specified in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, seat kilometer, uh, thousand seat kilometer. While the other one will be specified in terms of hundred uh, uh, passenger kilometer. Okay. So here, the activity for each transportation mode, when you have evaluated it, you can from there now evaluate the modal speed, the, its participation in uh, the overall uh, uh, activity. And here we are analyzing group by group, public transportation mode separately to private transportation mode. That means the sum of modal split of uh, private mode should be 100, and the sum of public transportation modes should also be 100. So that is uh, how uh, the, the input parameter that we need. And where are we typing it? Here, for example, as I was saying, you have only one place for cars to specify the load factor for cars. But for other transportation mode, you can specify the yeah, load factor easily here. The car ownership, you can type it here. The distance travel, you can type it there. And then the distance travel by car on a yearly basis is also typed here. And after that, also again, the distance travel by car is just like the other one, like the distance travel by, uh, uh, by, by people, by, by the, the total number of passenger kilometer. It is proportional to the activity of the economy. For example, here you can realize on this picture, of course, it is not uh, written there clearly, but you will realize that for all these countries, the last value is dropping. The last value is dropping dramatically. That is the effect of uh, COVID-19. You can realize that those years where there was not a lot of activity, we had less uh, distance traveled by car. What? It is uh, obvious, it's obvious. You can understand easily that really if we don't have activity, we will not move. And then if we are not moving, then we are not doing a lot of kilometers. So that is um, the relationship behind this. And again, for the car ownership, it is a parameter in the future with the development. It is a parameter that will drop. The drop of this parameter means that we are having more cars a person. That means if three persons own one car, here, for example, on this picture, if 16 persons own one car, and then if only two persons own one car, it means that here we have a lot of cars in the country. So this is just the tendency to say that in the country, we generally have more and more cars. So we should reflect this when we are uh, projecting our uh, um, our car ownership in the model. And then, as we said, when we have calculated the model split, we will then type them here. The, the sum of uh, car, gasoline, car, diesel is 100%. And all other transport, uh, public transportation modes, the sum is also 100%. The evolution of this parameter into the future will depend on the policy. Let's imagine that you want to encourage people to go from the actual type of cars to, let's say, electric car, because it is uh, what is being, uh, it is, um, let's say, is the, the, the time of that now. So if you are encouraging people like that and you want to model what will be the need of that electricity in your, in your uh, system, then you will have to create at the very beginning, a line. That means a, tra a transportation mode that is consuming that electricity. And you will shift progressively according to the policy that you want to apply. You will shift from one transportation mode to give the new picture that you would like to have in the future. And therefore, the model will then calculate for you the energy that will be needed for each of these transportation modes 
uh, according to the input parameter that you will type. So here, the intensities, that means the energy consumption per 100 kilometer will be typed there. And as I said, for the plane, we have the kilo, the, the number, the, the uh, energy intensity, which is also specified in a different unit here. And you should be careful about that. The unit here is kilowatt hour per hundred per thousand seat kilometer. So that is um, what we have. And then for international transportation, remember this equation that we said. The user, the input parameter here are these two coefficients. The coefficient that is called constant here is this first one. The coefficient that is called variable here is the second value here. So the, the, the one that is proportional to, let's say, the one that will be multiplied by the GDP. So that is the one that will be on the second line here that we need to calculate. And to calculate it, either we use the historical value to estimate the, uh, the the slope the slope which will be the coefficient two or the curve intercept that will be the coefficient one to type in the model so and, and uh, for example this is an example of using historical value let's say we have the value of 2013 we have the values of 2014 and from there we can now calculate the slope of this curve, that is this one, and then the intercept, that is that one, and then we can type it in the model and have our international passenger transportation mode inserted properly. So, and uh, we just uh, evaluate now how this parameter will evaluate in the future, and at the end, it already show you the first day how we can extract the result and analyze them. So, that is what I intended to share with you this morning to initiate the discussion. So thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, Emmanuel, for that wonderful presentation. Uh, of course, my question is related to the delivery of the segregation of the data as Emmanuel was presenting. I'm worried. I don't know whether other countries they are the better at this at an advantage than us. Uh, I would like to know from other members whether we have the same challenge because the, what Emmanuel was presenting indicated that there is a big challenge with data to do with transport sector. So, especially what I would like to hear from other members whether they are able to collect data to do with average daily distance traveled per person. Because we would also learn from, we would like to learn from them how they are able to do that. Because for our case, uh, we have uh, the data collected, the segregation by load, uh, rail, and maybe aviation. But to track data to do with the, the daily distance, the daily distance traveled by private mode, I think uh, we are not doing well in that part. And uh, from what he has indicated, I think he, for our case, we will only enter data in the base value. Of course, I stand to be corrected in that area. Mm -hmm. That's if we don't have that level of segregation, then probably that's what uh, we shall be doing. But mm -hmm. uh, I need to hear from other members. How is the experience from their side? And maybe mm -hmm. you can you can give us a guidance on how to go about our case. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So Emmanuel would share more of the experience now on that topic. But what I would say now first is that this is the most challenging of all the sector that you will be modeling there, because usually the sector where you have less information. So what you could, and it's Emmanuel will give you more idea, and then I'm pretty sure that you would talk of that when you are there with the other colleagues from the other uh, countries that they could also share their information on how they are collecting the data there. So most of the country, when they start the first time, what they do is to make a lot of assumptions. Yes. They would call people from the transport sector if you know someone they are, or from your own experience, you would do a lot of assumptions. Because you would have most probably only the global fuel consumption for the transport. 
at the better case. So in the better case, you would have that. So you will need to assume how much is for freight transportation, how much is for uh, passenger transportation, and knowing your country, so type of transport that you see in the country and so on, you would need to do assumptions of how to divide it and how many people are moving so on. And this is where you would need to do a lot of reconstruction of the base year to come up with some structure that will be in line with the energy balance and the report that you have for the fuel consumption. So I see this is one of the things that Emmanuel and the other two experts will help you a lot when you are there. If you don't have what I would suggest now, Emmanuel will now say something, that if you don't have the clear data for the transport sector, I would advise you to work on the other sectors this week that you are alone. And then next week when you are there in Nigeria, you can, in Namibia, sorry, when you're there in Namibia, you can work uh, together with Emmanuel and there face to face, he would explain you how to assume what type of assumption you could do, what could be the most acceptable things to divide it that according to when you describe him, how is your country, he would explain you then how better doing that because he has a lot of experience doing this type of analysis, so he can help you there directly. That would be my advice. So, Emmanuel, what do you say? Okay, thank you, Ilse, for this answer. That is uh, clearly uh, the challenge that is in transport sector. I agree. In many cases that I have made, the, this challenge really remain. Of course, it is true that uh, if you already have some information from there now, you can assume and later on you can drive some recommendation on how you can improve your statistic to facilitate in the future your analysis of, type, of this type of studies. For example, uh, when you are talking about the distance travel per car, of course, uh, it is not a statistic that you will have easily. Sometimes, in some cases, you even just in the training room like this, make a quick survey just to come out with the number and move on. Let's say you will have, you pick some participant in case you are from the same country, because the situation are so different from one country to another one, you cannot easily transpose a, a particular situation from one country to another one. Right? Anyway, in uh, average, you can analyze and uh, come out with some numbers, as Ilse said, uh, just that at the end you have to consume the whole fuel that was uh, set up with, uh, by the energy balance, according to the methodology that was used to collect that data, because generally it's much more easy to collect this data. And there are many ways to check if that energy was really consumed in transport sector. But in the future, you can... Um, uh, get in touch with people of the Ministry of Transport and uh, with them uh, you can target even some particular uh, uh, institution there. Let's say, for example, people that are working on uh, registrations of cars, from there you, you will have an idea on the number of cars that you have which are operational in your country. Because each, each year you are paying what we are called, there is a stamp that you are paying for your car. That stamp, if you can be able to collect the number of uh, stamps which we sell, you can now have the information on the real amount of cars that are operating yearly in your country. Of course, it's true that there will be some people which are making sure that they are not paying everything that they have to pay, but at the end you can have an idea on that. There is also in another place, places, there, there are also some other places where you are carrying out, for example, technical check. From those people, they can uh, have a better estimate on the amount of um, kilometer performed by each car yearly. Let's say if you are doing your technical check one time per year, each time they are coming, they can write down the number of kilometers that your car is uh, having today. And from the previous one, you can now see the amount that you have uh, consumed. The recommendation that you can do to simplify your life in the future is to make the record of this information be mandatory. Let's say if each car is coming from techni for technical check, if they can uh, record uh, this information in, uh, let's say, in a computer. And at the end, you have a lot of information to synthesize and 
to have the information on the distance that each car is traveling and the type, each type of uh, car, because they will be registered with the number of car, with the mode of car and everything. Unfortunately, this information is not available. And uh, up to now, it is only assumption that has been used in many cases to come over this area. So I don't know, as you said, the question was not just targeted to me. It was also to participants. You wanted to understand the experience of other participants. If they may also say something, it will be a good discussion. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, of course, we have indicated that uh, it's quite challenging for working countries. So I think we are all at the same level. A different level, but almost the same. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for your for your response, and uh, we shall try to get some more experiences as we come together. Thank you. Yes, yes. Another way is to use the benchmark. Let's say, but the benchmark will just give you an idea that no, maybe I'm not so far from uh, the reality. But you should not just stick on the benchmark because. You are, your particular situation is specific. So the things that are inside your country are specific, except you find a range where you can say that I will compare my case with this country because of this resemblance that we have together. So it's the only way that you could uh, also do it. But the benchmark will give you the range of plausibility that is uh, inside your assumptions. Yes, thank you.